Hello. In this video, I'm gonna go in about the problem that I had with this Pacifica GT800, how I fixed that problem with no background in electrical circuits or electrical motors. And then the third thing is I'm gonna show you what these um, major components look like on the inside so that you have a reference of a working pottery wheel that you can then reference to whatever situation that you're navigating. Okay, so first thing, what's the problem with the wheel? The problem was is that it could turn on, this light would turn on, but when they would work the pedal, the wheel wouldn't spin. That's all I really knew. Um, I knew the, the person I was buying this from was through Facebook Marketplace. They were selling it used and advertised as broken. They were selling it for 200 bucks. I thought that was a good deal because they go for $1,500 new. Um, and I figured even if I had to replace parts, it was still a good deal. Um, the other thing is that the guy was storing it in his warehouse in Florida, which is not AC controlled. So first thing that comes to mind is moisture and humidity, rust, messing with electrical components, messing with the copper. So that was the problem. Um, a common issue that I see with pottery wheels is that people will talk about how everything looks good like this and they'll hear the engine humming. And that was not the situation. There's no humming happening. So I also want to concisely explain what this, how I fixed the problem. Um, the problem ultimately was with the motor. Now I opened up the motor completely. I'll show more detailed photos of that in the third part. And what happened was that there's these brushes that connect with the copper and those needed to be cleaned up. Once I had those cleaned up, I put everything back together and it ran just fine. So now I'm going to go into detail on how I fixed the Pacifica GT800 and provide the resources for you to reference to fix your own. These people love their Pacifica pottery wheels. They love them because they've had them for decades and they still work. And the other nice thing is that if any part of it breaks, they can usually just swap out the motor or the control box really easily and get it running in, in a quick amount of time. The problem is that this control box and pedal runs about $500 for a new repair and the motor is about $200, $300. Um, so usually the issue that people have is that they it will plug in and everything and then they'll try to turn on the motor and they'll hear a humming but it's not spinning the wheel. And that's an issue uh, with the capacitor. So the capacitor is inside this control box here. It's a blue blue uh, in here in the back. Um, and that's just not operating. You can usually swap out the capacitors and get that running just fine. My issue is that the it would power on and there was no humming, no humming at all. So everyone thought that it was the control box, something with the circuitry. So I opened the control box up um, and I used a multimeter. I had to learn what, how multimeters are. I got one cheap on Amazon for $13. It was a manual multimeter. I learned, watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I'm not gonna go into multimeters. You can probably find a better video on how to, it's gonna teach you everything you need to know. Um, and I tested all the resistors and the circuit boards and and just every little part to see um, if there was electricity traveling through throughout it. And I was able to determine that even when I manipulate the pedal, that it's regulating, it's shifting the amount of voltage going throughout it. So I was like, okay, like there's, everything seems to be working. I even checked um, all the way back here. And so um, with this, there's a ground wire, which is the top one, I believe. And then there's the uh, positive and negative um, and so you can test that right there. Um, the other nice thing is that on the engine here, um, it will tell you, um, and again, you'll, you'll notice that the horsepower says 100. A GT800 is supposed to have a one horsepower engine. Um, I didn't check before I bought it from the guy, and of course I was upset that night, but not really, because I knew it was on me. I just didn't check, um, and that was foolish of me. Typical Facebook Marketplace. But anyways, you can go in here and you can see the cords that will run here through here, through here, this connects to the control box. This goes into the motor. So you can open this up by these screws right here. You know, I took this whole motor off um, and you'll see the white and black um, 
electrical wiring and you can test that and you can see that there's voltage and when you manipulate the pedal that voltage was actually changing going up and down um, but it would go up really quickly and then it would only fade going down when I was told that it was supposed to drop instantly um, and the only time it would drop instantly is when I turned this um, to neutral right now it's on forward it goes forward neutral reverse um, but basically what that told me was that the control box and pedal are communicating with the motor and I was thinking that it was something wrong with the motor. Um, so, but during this, I'm speaking to, you know, Laguna, right? Laguna Techs who, who you know, provide the machines um, and they're patiently, you know, answering some of my questions, but also they're you know, I don't know what I'm really talking about. So, they, you know, they're not giving me all the time in the world, which is fair. Um, and then I'm also talking, I also contacted the manufacturers of this engine, Hill House Products, right? Um, and both of them were like, oh, it's the, it's the control box. It's probably the circuit board and the control box. And the circuit board, I'll get into that later. Um, I'll get into that later. It's a KBLC125. Um, made by KB Electronics. That's the original that was in here. That is a discontinued circuit board. This Pacifica is like over 25 years old. It's the older model. Um, the replacement, I called KB Electronics, the replacement circuit board is a KB IC125 and it's about $100 after shipping. It's like $135. Um, so if you really think it's a control board, maybe that's worth trying out because if you replace all of this and this, the control box and the pedal, it's $500. A control board or, you know, that, that controls the speed is 135. So if you really think it's that, you could do that, but you're also nickel and diming yourself because once you run electricity through the circuit board and it's not it, KB Electronics doesn't want your circuit board that you've run power through because they don't know what else is, you've done to it. Um, but anyways, just some background for you. Um, so anyways, I took this apart and I'm gonna show another video on um, what it looked like on the inside because it's the first time so on the bottom of the electrical motor, there are those metal plates. Once I removed those plates and I spun the rotor of the motor, I could see this rust, this, that blue rust on the copper. That rust had been in between that metal brush and, and the copper engine. And this showed me that it clearly needed to be cleaned out and that there was some sort of effect from the moisture from being here in Florida on these copper components. So this is the half horsepower TENV Hillhouse DC motor. There's the model number. I've taken it out of its casing. Um, these were bent. This I've seen I thought someone had put clay in here, but I've seen this kind of epoxy on any kind of other DC motor. Um, one of the things I noticed is that there is some oxidation rust on the copper where this had been sitting over this, like this, dormant. So this needs to be, in any video, I see people clean this thoroughly so that it's polished, even all the black that you see so that it looks more like that copper color. And then there's these brushes. So with the multimeter, I was able to determine that these brushes, this black chalk there that the black cord is connected to, they're getting 137 volts. Now, when I communicated this to the owner of the engine Hill House products, they determined that that perhaps was too high of voltage and that there could be something wrong with, again, the circuit board that would control the speed. And also the fact that when I would turn off the pedal, that voltage would not just drop down immediately it would sort of slowly dissipate however even though the specialists were telling me that it was probably something wrong with the control board my limited knowledge of this was still very confused to how it could be getting power and not spinning the engine so what i had done is i had managed to successfully remove this copper core of the engine and was able to find additional rust it's difficult for me to describe with this image specifically where I found the rust, but what's important 
is that I removed this core copper part of the motor away from these brushes along the frame. And this allowed me to see rust that I thought was not there just from looking at it externally. Um, specifically where I found the rust is where you see that silver arrow part on top of the brush. It's pointing right at this little skinny rectangular bar. Between that bar and the brush is where I found rust that I couldn't really see until I had removed everything. And once I cleaned that out, that resolved the issue and allowed the motor to work properly. Basically the issue is that the copper um, wasn't making full contact with the brush and this then allowed it to do that. And then I noticed some additional like rust. And basically, even though from the outside when I was pulling on this spring to like go inside, it was springing back and going forward on both sides. It was actually hitting this bit of rust that I could not see, even though I looked like so many times with the powerful flashlight and everything. It was only when again, I moved all the copper interior that it became visible. And once I removed that, then it was actually able to truly spring and touch the copper um, interior. And after I did that and I plugged it all back in together, it ran. Um, so. First full test run. Let's give it. Works.